thought I would take a set or two of these for a test drive and see how they performed compared to a lot of the other batteries that I've tested. First thing is I wanted to just weigh a couple of these and see if the Enelope Pros compared to the Lada's are of similar weight. So we've got the scale here, goes down to grams and is super shiny. Let's turn it on and tear it. I'll measure a couple of these Enelope Pros, three of each, and we'll just go ahead and run through these. 30 grams, 47 now, 30 grams, and 30 grams. It's interesting, these, no, they feel about the same. I, I just, the Ikea ones, no, they feel a little bit more dense. The, all the Enelube Pros are 30 grams. The, the Lada went to 30 grams as well, but it went to 31 just for a second there. 30 grams. 30 grams. The same weight as the Enelube Pros. Another potential indicator that they are similar. The batteries, these Ladas, come in this package, bright, bright green, and basically indicate that they're ready to use. And is there anything that I want to mention on here? They do indicate that they're made in Japan. It does look like they're saying that this is 500 charge cycles. Again, according to, with IKEA, there's never really any explanation of anything. I think this is 500 charge cycles, which would be right in line with the Enelu Pros because they have a 500 charge cycle lifetime. Ready to use. Uh, also, they are indicating that it's 1.2 volts at 2450 milliamp hour. These are claiming that they are at the rating of the minimum rating of all the the last batch of Analoop Pros that I bought, which were, they say a minimum of 2450 milliamp hour, which we've talked about before in a separate video. And these actually are 2550 milliamp hour, or in some cases, 2500 milliamp hour. So let's just get to what the, the test data came to with all these. I've got all eight of them here, ran them through the, the charger. And I was pretty impressed. We take a look at the, the various test profiles, same thing I've been doing for all the other batteries that I've tested, the Eneloop Pros. The uh, Eneloops, when I just did uh, one set of four of Eneloop Pros, the, uh, the EBLs, the Power Owls, they all, uh, actually the Power Owl testing was the inspiration for doing these multiple test profiles to get a better idea of the battery's performance. With a discharge of 100 milliamp hour, the average came right in at 2.45 amp hour, which is the minimum, which is what these are stating. And then it just went up from there. Only a few fell below the 2.45, but it was just by 0.01 milliamp hour. That's well within the tolerance of the charger. The 250 milliamp hour, everything jumped up quite a bit, just like it did in the Antelope Pros. The average being 2.62 amp hour, some climbing up to 2.67, 2.7. Then at the 350 milliamp discharge current, it went up to 2.67. There's a couple that peaked at around 2.72, 2.73. And finally, at 500 milliamp discharge current, this actually is a bit different than what we saw with the Eneloop Pros. It kept going up to 2.71, whereas the Eneloop climbed up until it hit 350 milliamp and then came back down again a little bit at that 500 milliamp discharge current. But these kept going up, 2.45, 2.62, 2.67, and then 2.71 average, which is, is amazing. There's one caveat that I'm going to add before we go to the graph is that the Eneloop Pros that I have here have been, I don't have new Eneloop Pros. These are new and they've been probably, th these were through about 15 charge cycles before I tested them. These were about 20 to 25 charge cycles. They were at least a year old. So these have chemically aged a little bit more than the Lada's. And one set of four was from 2014, so one set of four was six years older. I'm curious if I had to remove those that kind of fell a little bit lower, would it give you a, a similar trend between the two? That I'll just, I'll just 
put that in there afterwards and put something on the lower third. Let's go to the graph and you can just see how consistent these cells are. It's, it's amazing. As you get up to the 350 milliamp hour and then the 500 milliamp hour, it's just, it's, it's impressive. I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with the, the results of this testing and just using them, just using them in a variety of different capacities from Christmas lights to things that are more high surge demand. I have an air, uh, an air quality monitor that'll be in a future video. They're priced really well. These, I think I bought these for $6.99. Granted, you're buying them from Ikea, so you gotta pay for shipping. Because if you try to buy them on Amazon or anywhere else, you're gonna pay a lot more for them. But if you can get them through an Ikea store and buy enough stuff so that the shipping makes sense, all in all, the Lottas are worth it. They also make a AAA version, which I am testing separately the 900 milliamp hour. One final thing is that I will mention the battery charger really quickly. I left it as this charger's probably just fine for using the IKEA cells with it. And uh, I, that's all I ever charged these cells with until they were tested on the, the LaCrosse Technologies charger. So to, to get the capacity ratings, they were all done tested on this charger. but day-to-day -day, you know week-to-week -week charging was all done with this so i mean i think that's fine for that purpose uh, i am doing a little deeper dive into this because i was curious about the way that it was charging cells and if it was okay for use with regular Eneloops and uh, Eneloop pros and the ebl cells who cares with the ebl cells but uh, the Eneloops primarily is it okay to be to, to be used with them that I'll be covering in a separate video. Um, the IKEA cells are fine to be used with this because IKEA had someone make the charger for these cells. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.